In this short course, we are going to recreate the system to send email from Gmail, and we are going to use Resend to send these emails. Okay, so we've got our Resend Next.js 14 project, which is available on my GitHub if you want to fetch it. Let's look at first at our API route. So here on our API route, we got email and send. And when we open this route, the send route, we can see that we've got a post and we've got elements that we catch and we send an email through email template, which is taking the content coming from here. So if I open content, it's a simple uh, content, actually a simple string that is going to be actually HTML in here. So we've got it here, content. So we've got this route that we can call and we've got our application running in here. So what I can do is to go here on my app and I can start to work on this page. So the first page that we got there and we can create a form and this form is going to be exactly like the box of Gmail where we send email. So uh, this is just going to be a box that is going to send an email. Of course, with we send right now, we can't receive the email yet. So what we're going to do, we are going to start coding this form. So let's go. Um, what I want to do uh, at first is to work on the design because here we see that it's black. So I'm going to go to my global.css and I'm going to remove all of this for now. And we're going to come back probably just after. So if I come back and I update, I'm supposed to have, yes, there we go. And let's say that on my body, I'm going to apply a text black because I am using actually Tailwind CSS and there's nothing written. So if I come back in here, we are good. First thing that I want to do is to have a container centered. And let's say that actually here, it's not going to be on this one. It's going to be on the div just after. Here, there we go. And here I want to have some background. So I'm going to add a class name BG Gray. 100 and we should be good we should have the bg gray 100 there we go and inside here i'm going to create a div and this is going to div where i'm going to have my form and we can see it here i'm going to add some style to this div i want to have a border rounded shadow sm and what i want to have is some padding bg white and there we go we already see that we got some shape okay so here we see that we've got some padding probably i'm going to remove it because i would like to have my inputs. So what is a form to send an email? Well, we're going to do exactly the same as we've got actually uh, on Gmail or any other um, uh, send email system. So basically, we're going to have one input with text. So with a placeholder here, it's going to be um, your email address. OK, it's supposed to be your email address. And I'm going to say save that. After that, it's supposed to be um, so actually it's your email address, but it's from, okay. It's your from address. Then what we're going to have is, and we can look actually at the route to send our uh, email. We're going to have the two. Okay. And we can have the reply to. So here it's going to be two. Okay. So here it's from two. We can say reply to, because probably we want to use the reply to. And we're going to have at the end also, we're going to have the subject. So I can put my subject here. And of course, we're going to have the text area. So here I'm going to put my text area with a placeholder, which is going to be my email. There we go. And I type, etc, etc. So here we can see that it's already uh, on, uh, on flexing. So I don't want to have some flex. I'm going to put a flex gap two, and we should be good. When I click on the element, we can see that I got some borders. So now I got to do some styling with uh, SCSS or CSS if I have a, a CSS. So what I want to do, I want to give some style to my input. So be safe here. You got to specify that it's going to be of type text or a text area, right? So here, basically, I'm going to remove the text area for now. It's going to be something else. I'm going to use the power of Tailwind to give some shape to my elements. So here I want to remove my outline. I'm going to put first outline node. I'm going to give some uh, padding on the left, on the right and on the top also. So I can put P, Y, 1 and there we go. I want to have also a border B. And now you see that here on my um, on my form, we can see that uh, this is why we didn't put any padding on the left or on the right. So uh, I'm good here. 
Uh, probably here I put um, here rounded, but I would like it to be rounded XL, it would be better. Or probably rounded to XL and with some overflow hidden, okay? So I'm going to put some overflow hidden. And there we go, so it looks like Gmail. So what I can do, I can go down here on the bottom and I can create a button and here it's going to be send, the send email button we're gonna have. Of course, we don't miss to put the same padding and here it's going to be um, larger, right? So we want something bigger like this. And we can work, of course, on the design of our email quickly. So here I can apply a BG, I think it's a blue 500, something like this. Text white, font bold, uh, PX4, PY3, rounded, full, something like this. And if I save, I think it's a little bit like this. So font bold, it's probably not font bold. It's probably font medium. And we should be good. There we go. So here, when I over, of course, I want to have a BG Blue 400, 500. And I want to say that it's also on Shadow SM. So when I pass my mouse, we see these little effects. And of course, next to it, we can have some elements that we can add. For that, I can go to icongs.org. So let's say that I'm going to type attachment to get an attachment or a link, and I'm going to search for all icons. We can see here that I got some icons. So I'm going just to copy paste one. Let's say that this one is very nice. So I'm going to go down here on react.ts. And when I'm going to click on it, it's going to create a React or a TypeScript. Uh, React TypeScript component. So I click on the React TypeScript component. I come back to my uh, application. I go here, I create an icons without an E because we are not French. There we go. And then it's going to be attachment.tsx and I'm going to copy paste the element. Down here, I can call attachment, my icon coming from the icons folder. So I can import attachment icon from here and I can go to check my components and here we got icons slash attachment and there we go and I can use my attachment icon in here to put the export default and there we go we can see we've got our little icon so what I can do is just to give a bit of style we're not going to do all the icons of course it's going to be a fast course here I'm going to put a flex item center and I'm going to put a gap four let's say and there we go and I'm going to have some shape, so text gray 500 and also text uh, font, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, text to Excel. And there we go. So we've got our little icon that we are gonna use probably one day. Button here, I'm gonna add some um, uh, space on the left and on the right. So I'm going to click on here and there we go. We are ready. So now we would like to work on catching all the um, information that we got everywhere here so we need to catch everything into a state so we're going to use use a state so i'm going to create const data set data here i'm going to use user state okay and i'm not going to put any type for now but remember on the root we need to have a from at least we need to have a subject a content and we can add here the reply to so i'm going to have a from which will be on undefined to which will be on undefined by default also and we're gonna have the subject the content so i can use this subject and then the reply to also reply to we should not forget it reply to then we're gonna have the content and we should be good we already got our element in here so what i can do now is to write a function called uh, handle change which will be really easy to set all the data here personally i'm using um, snippets that i code and snippets that you can also find um, in vs code store so here i'm going to type handle change and i'm going to have a function that i can use here that is going to catch actually the name and uh, the value of every element so here the name is going to be from and what i want to do i want to say that on change what i want to do is to call handle change so it's going to catch the name and it's going to set the value so here it's going to be the same and i can put name which will be two because here we got two here we got reply to so here the name is going to be reply to okay so we're gonna set up reply to then we got to do the same with subject and content 
So I'm going to go down and here I'm going to type also name and here it's going to be subject. And after that, here it's going to be name, it's going to be content. The last function I want to code is to send the email simply, and it's going to be an asynchronous function that is going to send the current email. So here again, I can go really fast by using my try catch, and I can create my function that is going to be clicked on here on send. But before I need another one, I want to have a loading state. So I'm going to use my loading set loading, which will be on user state. And by default here, what I'm going to do, it's going to be on false. It's going to be of type Boolean. Okay, here I didn't put the type. I should put the type here for now. It's going to be any, but actually it's going to be unknown, which is going to be better. So we've got a loading state and what we want to do, we want to disable the button if it's loading. So I'm going to type disable and here it's going to be loading. And here I want to say if it's loading, we're going to type actually loading. There we go for now. We don't get any spinner, but we could pass a spinner. Otherwise, it's going to be send and we should be good. So here if I save, there we go. If I turn it to true, we've got the loading and there we go. So we've got it. Now what I can use is going to on my <laughs> button in here. And when it's disabled, I want to change the BG to BG gray 200. Okay, so look at this. This is the power of Tailwind. If I turn this loading into true, we've got our button that is here. And we would like to do exactly the same for this one. We can do it just after. Now we're going to work on our send email function. Okay, so we've got our function send email, which is awaiting for a fetch to the root to send our email on our local API. If there, is, if there is a response, we're going to response console log the response here. And we bind actually the send email function on the button. So before here, we would like to alert, we would like to deconstruct um, actually our data that we got here. And remember, we are supposed to have, of course, uh, from to, and uh, we are supposed to have content also and subject. So if we don't get all these elements, we want actually to um, alert and say, uh, you miss this element. Okay, so now if I don't enter everything that I need to, it's supposed to stop. So here as a from, we don't get many options because remember here you need to use your custom domain. So me, I got my custom domain. So by default, what I can do here is to put newsletter at codewithguillaume.com. Okay. And I can say uh, reply to, and here I can put a reply here. So if I put those elements directly, it's going to be set. Uh, on my uh, value here that I missed. So I need to put my value. So let's go, let's click on send. And here we see that we got pending, we got a 200. And here we see that we send something. And when I go to resend, we can see that here my email has been delivered. And if I go to my email, we can see here that I got my test. Okay, last test. What if we would like to have a text editor in here? We could probably use novel.sh, so I'm going to install novel to my project. So I'm going to stop my server and install novel here. And when it will be done, I will be able to use this WYSIWYG here that we see, this amazing package made by Steven T. Okay, back in here on the top, I'm going to import editor from novel. So I got it, I got my editor. And instead of my uh, text area, I'm going to use my editor, which is here. So I'm going to import it. And when I update, I'm supposed to have the same editor. So what I can do is just to remove all of this, right? I'm going to remove it. And we've got the editor here. So we see that we got probably some SCSS to do to make it better because we also see that we got problems with our button. So we can target actually novel relative and we can actually remove here the uh, border. So I'm going to put border zero. If I got some trouble, I can install SAS and I can rename my global here.css to SCSS. So my, I will be able to do some CSS. Don't forget to re-import globals at SCSS. Okay, and what I can do is to use important to be sure that I'm going to use this. And same for the button. And actually, it's going to be 
more here a button dot primary because actually novel is also using some styling and i don't want to enter in conflict okay and here we go so let's say that now i'm going to use like um, a title my title and my text down here so i'm going to use this and just put it on bolt and probably i can even put it a, a header here my title and here i could put my link and on my link what i can put is my website https slash codewithguillaume.com there we go so i can just test that okay so here the thing is that we got to catch the content so here on our editor we're gonna go here on on update and here we got access to a function and let's say it's going to be value any and actually it's the editor we've got here so what we need to do here is to turn the html so um, the value to html so here i'm going to type get html here right so here on handle change we're gonna have a target and in this target we're gonna have the name which is the content and then the value which is the html so our function will think we got uh, actually here this element this event with the, the target object containing the name and the value at this step of the course it's important to come back on our template and to look at here we have to set the inner html inside to render the html we're going to send okay it's time to try so i'm going to click on send and there is no notification yet but we should have a notification your email has been sent and if we look at our email we receive the email with everything that has been edited directly inside our email sent. You can find the code in the description if you want to use this box that we created together. And thanks to Novel for this nice code editor or text editor, it's really useful when you want to create custom email. Thanks also to Resend to all the features they are creating because this tool is really amazing and really helps to send emails every day.